Hello there, my name is Ismaus and welcome to another Blender tutorial. So I've been making this wallet, modeling this wallet, uh, which you can watch uh, the time lapse of uh, the process on my second channel, uh, Blender Money. You can see uh, it will be there. I'll be leaving a link in the description as well. Uh, but uh, I also thought of kind of animating uh, this zip here to have it open uh, the wallet to reveal the insides. And uh, I've been experimenting uh, with different ways to do it. And uh, this is what I've managed uh, to achieve. So this is the zip here. And uh, you can see, let me maybe just switch to this view. So this is what I've managed to achieve right now. So let me show you how I kind of set it up uh, so, so that you can maybe get an idea. Yeah, so the first thing you want to do is uh, find uh, the kind of, I don't know how they're called, uh, but uh, let me first remove these. Where is this? Yeah, so this thing here, maybe a tooth or something. Apply scale, apply rotation. I model that tooth or whatever it's called and uh, then you're going to add an array uh, make sure you give it uh, the right offset and uh, then you can create your uh, add a curve uh, that is going to be kind of the deformer or rail uh, where this uh, zip is going to be where the, the zip is going to follow so for me i just did use the edge loop of my wallet here so I just selected you can watch this in the time lapse but I just selected uh, the an edge loop like this and then converted it into uh, a curve and so that so that I don't have to worry about creating a curve and then kind of deforming it around uh, the, uh, the wallet uh, which would be a lot of work so you can just create a cube, sorry, add a plane, and then shape it into uh, the shape you want. So maybe this here, and then convert it into a curve. Uh, I'll need to remove that face, then convert it into a curve. So you go on an object, make sure this is recording. I go on an object, and then convert to curve, and then you would have, you would have your curve. This and uh, where is my tooth? Yeah, so and then what you would do under your your tooth? I make sure that uh, they they're sharing the same position. So you can select the the curve shift S and then so that you have your cursor at at the location of the pivot point of the of the curve and then select your tooth and then shift S cursor, uh, sorry, selection to cursor uh, so that they are in the same position and then uh, under the array you can change uh, the fit type to curve and uh, select your curve and it should have the length of the curve. Make sure you also apply a scale and rotate, sorry, a scale, otherwise uh, this is going to be longer than the curve. Also make sure you also scale that, you apply scale for the for the uh, for the curve and then under the array add another curve modifier and then select uh, the curve uh, and then you should have uh, the tooth kind of following uh, the array uh, i think we're having some scaling issues so uh, let me fix that by just scaling up the curve let's see let me also make this open And uh, you can see this is a bit segmented. Uh, uh, the curve is a bit segmented. That's why you see we have some hard facets or hard corners or hard edges. So when you convert uh, a mesh into a curve, it's converted as a polygon curve. So to convert it into a Bezier curve, you just need to go to edit mode, right click, and then set a uh, spline type to uh, Bezier. And then uh, you'd have these corners still be there because uh, when you convert the polygon to uh, Bezier, it will be 
converted as uh, what is it called um, a vector a set handle type now if you want to set it to a kind of a, a smoother curve you right click and then set handle type to automatic or aligned so I'll set it to automatic so that we have a more carved object we have some scaling issues here so let me first see what's going on here if I apply scale here apply scale here I also apply rotation for this apply rotation for this and you can see now we need to fix our array here uh, to be offset in the right direction so let's do one and uh, let's bring back our curve so I'm not sure why this is happening but uh, let's just scale it directly here and I think we can also scale it in the Z axis Yeah, you can see now we have our kind of teeth are following uh, the curve. Now to deform this curve, uh, to make it behave like it's opening, you just need to create a curve like this. You can always start with a curve, add a curve, just scale it down a bit. Uh, then make sure you first set it to automatic so that it's a straight line and then extrude from this and then you can change this handle type again to automatic uh, then you can fix this so you can see how it's going to be opening something like that and then what you would do let me just make it open a little bit wider add another control point there then what you would do you would select let me first hide uh, this tool and uh, just to see this curve here I'm just going to go to the curve object properties and uh, increase the bevel so that I can give it some volume uh, so that is easier for me to see uh, and for you to see as well I can see it is there uh, maybe just move this here around like that now you can select this curve as well and uh, give it an, a curve modifier and uh, this time you're going to choose this as the curve modifier and now we just have to figure out uh, the right axis so let's see so you see we have the setting here uh, on the curve modifier uh, this here so if you click if you click on it you see what happens it just snaps uh, whatever this is at uh, the tooth array or the tooth object onto that curve so uh, make sure you do that as well and uh, now we just need to figure out the right uh, direction for this so the first thing we should do is uh, kind of make sure that this curve is at the same position as this uh, uh, deformer so I'll just select this shift s cursor selected and then select the curve cursor selection to cursor and uh, you can see now it's following the curve but uh, it's kind of go, gone off too, a bit too far so I just select the curve and uh, then move it along and we should get something like that let's subdivide this a bit okay why is this not giving me enough okay so you see that uh, when I'm moving this around, sorry, it's raining. It's a bit raining here. I'm not sure if, if you can hear uh, the rain, but uh, you see that uh, we don't have enough polygons to kind of follow this curve correctly. So what I'm going to do is uh, just come in here and uh, create a few more subdivisions where we don't have enough subdivisions on this curve. So I'll just subdivide this a few uh, times uh, like that. And uh, you can see now if I move this you can see we are getting a more smooth uh, uh, curve but uh, this is not the curve we want to move uh, we want we don't want the zip at kind of this uh, zip rail to move I uh, want it to just open so let me just offset this a bit first now to kind of instead of moving this curve we just move uh, the control or the deformer so if I move this on the x-axis you can see how you start deforming 
that. You see that? And see how that is working. And uh, maybe what we can do, because I don't want this last position to move. I remember that's going to be the end of the zip, so I can just add a few extra uh, control points. Now, and uh, just make sure that uh, they're on the same level. So just do this like this. Can even rotate this a bit, uh, make this curve even a bit stronger. By curving this even further. So now if we move this, you can see, like, that's what we get. And now what you would do, you would just make a copy of the entire setup here, shift D, and uh, we can mirror it on the other side. So mirror this curve on the opposite side just push it closer to this and uh, we just also need to mirror this uh, the tooth on the other side and you can see how they're starting to interlock uh, so now we just need to offset uh, this tooth to kind of interlock uh, better uh, maybe even position it closer they are interlocking I think they're facing the wrong direction so yeah we might want to rotate them let me see what axis is that uh, on the Z on the Y on the uh, you can always just go into edit mode uh, there are a few scaling issues I'm not sure where they're coming from but uh, yeah so I think we just need to scale this on the Z axis and uh, that should fix uh, the rotation at least for uh, this and uh, I can I can also just link uh, this to this control link object data uh, so that they are flipped in the same direction now we still have some scaling issues for some for some reason I'm not sure if this is a bug or just a setting but uh, yeah, you can see how they are interlocking and now if you select both of these and see how we are opening our zip now. And uh, then if you want to give this uh, a single object to control it, you just add an empty. Yes, something like this. Don't need this. And then parent these to before us to this and then control P and then just grab that and uh, so for the zip uh, let me just add a simple uh, cube here so assume this is your zip uh, then you parent it to the object and uh, you should have your zip working so that's what I've done so far and uh, thanks for watching again uh, if you want to watch uh, the entire video of making the wallet you just go to my uh, second channel and uh, watch uh, the time lapse uh, there thank you for watching i will see you in the next video